YouTube kick. <laughs> you saw the title. It is what it is. Listen, I'm not saying all nine binary people are soft. No, okay. I just want y'all to see this video. This is specific to this video. All right. Grab your drinks. Take a sip. Try to hold it down. Let's go to the first video there, DJ. What do you have in your mouth? Nothing. Ew. What do you have in your mouth? Nothing. You guys are just scaring me. Lift your tongue. Lift your tongue for me. You guys are scaring me. There's nothing to be afraid of. Okay, walk around my, my vehicle. What's going on? Nothing. Why are you driving in the wrong way of traffic? No, I just got changed around. I just moved here like two months ago. And okay. I just got changed around. Like, okay. So I, I just have like really bad social anxiety and stuff. I get you. So just a heads up, I don't want to be out here any longer than you do. We walk back to my car, I look it up on my computer, and I get you out of here. Okay. Okay? Go ahead, step out for Wait, me. What are you looking for? Your insurance registration. I'm gonna check your driver's license status. I'm gonna do all that. Sorry, just like as an indigenous person. And... Miss Perry, am I? Well, I'm non-binary, so. Okay. What do you go by? It's Kai. How can I refer to you tonight, Kai? Kai? Okay. Hey, I'm smelling alcohol. I know. How much have you consumed tonight? Like probably three drinks. Three drinks. Okay, judging by driving wrong way on that street. I know, that's the other thing that Well, I hang on, don't cut me off. Judging by how you're driving, the smell, I need to run you through some tests right now. Okay, that's why I have you out of the car. Once well, that's I, the thing that I asked about before. I said, okay, so you're just giving me for my registration. And mm -hmm. you said yes. Yep. And now you're running me for other stuff. Yeah, I'm going to run you through some tests to. to make sure you're safe to drive. Okay. okay. Stand facing me, please. But I just want you to know that I also have very bad social anxiety. You and me both. So that's the first part. Let's talk about part one. <clears throat> but then I got to go over all the what he should have said, what the cop should have said. And listen, we're just going to talk about the conversation we're having right now. For somebody who has social anxiety, right? I'm dealt with social anxiety. But here's the thing, right? That doesn't give you the right to go drinking and driving. So you don't get to be above the law. So just because you have social anxiety, you're non-binary, you have generational trauma, and you're an indig indigenous person. You don't get to be above the law. You don't drink and drive. For somebody who's trying to sound like, man, you need to care about me, you need to care about my feelings, do you care about other people? You're driving the wrong way, on the wrong side of the road, and you're intoxicated, and you're driving. Uh, do you not care about anybody's life? What about everybody else? What if you smash into somebody? What if you hurt somebody? What if you wreck somebody's car and they can't get to work anymore? Are you thinking about that? Or are you only thinking about you because you're drinking, you happen to be non-binary. So now we have to care about you. This cop can't do his job. Okay? So you, you only you get to only we get to care about you. See, you don't get to say that. See, that's what I that's why I say they're soft. They they, they just want to call out this kind of stuff. And I don't know. This person could just be that kind of person. It probably has zero to do with them being non-binary. That is just a coping and an excuse. It's an excuse. Some people just throw out, well, I'm not binary, so uh, da, da, da. You, you're still a terrible person. I don't want to hear about that. You're drinking and driving, driving on the wrong side of the road. I don't want to hear about none of that. You're non-binary stuff. You're just using that as an excuse to make me feel some kind of way that if I, if I misgender you or something, you're going to be all on my case. Be like, you, oh, you're messing me up because you call me ma'am, even though you happen to look and sound like a girl. I'm supposed to be okay with that, right? Is, is that it? Okay. Let's move on to the next part. Uh, I'm going to to go into part two. What do you have? <gasps> yes, this is part two. Me. There's nothing to be afraid of. <gasps> yes, there is. It's going generational trauma. Okay. Okay. I'm going to be going back and forth with my finger. I don't want you to move your head throughout this test. I just want you to focus on the tip of my finger, only moving your eyes. Focus on my finger, please. I am. You're just like trying to intimidate me. I don't know how I'm trying to do that. This is the test. I need you to take your glasses off, okay? Focus on my finger. 
Close my finger, please. I am, but you're... This is just how the test goes. I know, but you're exaggerating it more than it needs to be right now. This is just the test, okay? I know. When you stop and look at me, I have to redo a certain portion of the test. Okay. So just focus on my finger. Well, as you know, as an indigenous person, and there's a bunch of shit going around, I'm sorry, but it's just for me to be on my toes. I get you. Will you go back to that position I had you in? Standing with your feet together, arms by your side? Can you remember that I told you that? I'm non-binary. Yeah, I'll try my hardest, okay? It's not something that I do with every day, so I'll, I'll have the, uh, the mistake of the habit, right? So right, we're I'll refer to you as Kai, right? Be confused. Yes. Perfect. Just a straight four inch wide line. Yes. Perfect. Hang on. Do you want me? Like, I'm going to go over some instructions before you do anything, okay? I need to know if you have any injuries or anything that would prevent you from doing a standard walk or a turn tonight. Mental health. Um, any physical injuries? Mental, yeah. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, I'm just asking about I know. physical. I know. Okay? I know you are. So, I want you to go ahead and put your left foot on that four inch wide line just like I'm doing. Just like this, ma'am. Can you not call me ma'am, please? I'm trying my hardest. Okay, well. Okay. It means a lot to me. I'm trying my hardest. I don't Once again, so we're supposed. See, that's what's so hard. They wanted to play this, this pronoun game. He's going to get confused because he sees you as a woman. He's just going to naturally say that. But I also want to say this. You know, how she kept saying she has mental health, mental health issues and then she calls herself non-binary. Do you ever notice that sometimes people who are non-binary, they always say that they have mental illness as well, but yet we're supposed to see it as normal. We're, we're getting told that being non-binary and being transgender and all this other stuff is supposed to be normal. And it's, it's been in society for years. It's been happening since the late 1700s. But... At the same time, then they always say that they struggle with mental illness. They struggle with depression growing up. They struggle with anxiety. They struggle with friends. They struggle with this. They always say they had some kind of background of mental illness, but then they expect us to say that being non-binary and transgender is a normal thing. But y'all, y'all selves always contributed to y'all also being transgender, but also struggling mentally. You struggle with anxiety. You struggle with this. You struggle with that. See, it's literally saying I'm non-binary and I struggle mentally. She keeps stating that. So the fact that she keeps going to that and then keeps saying, call me ma'am, because it helps her. It's like, ma'am, there's nothing I can do to help your mental illness. Why do you put so much on me for me to take care of your mental illness? I don't owe you that. I, I'm i a human being, too. Why do I have to also call you ma'am when you just told me you struggle with your mental health and you're non-binary and you struggle with this and you struggle with that? I am not your therapist. I don't. I shouldn't have to go out of my way to make you feel better. What about me? What about other people? You expect everybody to go around and play this pronoun game with you? When they, what if they got mental health issues? What if they have anxiety? What if they deal with PTSD and all this other stuff? But only you, I have to go out of my way. When I'm already struggling with my own problems in life, I also have to take care of you and coddle you. No, I got to go to work. I got to pay bills. I got kids. I got stuff going on. It's not my job to take care of your mental health. If you're struggling mentally with that, that's on you. That's on you. It can't be everybody's job in society to take care of you. It just can't be. That doesn't work anywhere around the world where everybody has to take care of one person. Or that 99% of people have to take care of 0.7% of people who deal with being non-binary transgender. The entire population has to cater to just you. Instead of you dealing with your mental health issues and becoming a functional person in society... You can't do that. You want to go get in your go get in your random clothes, throw, you know, do with your different stuff and be wacky and be all this other stuff. I'm not going to knock people who have like different colored hair and piercings because there's people who have that kind of stuff who are normal people. I'm just saying, but if you if you're everything, if you got colored hair and you got piercing and you like to dress and drag and you like to do and, and you, you got 50 things going on, I can't I'm not about to help you with all that. That's not fair. That's not right. I know life is not fair. All is fair in love and war. I get it. I understand that everything's fair. But at the same time, it is not right. Let me say that. It is not right for everybody to take care of your mental health. You're drinking and driving and expecting this cop to be special for you, to be like, oh, you know what? You are non-binary and struggle mentally. It's okay. You can just drink and drive. Let me just let you go on about your merry way. No! You're not above everything. You're not above the law. You're not above people. If you struggle with that stuff, I'm sorry, but a lot of us struggle mentally. Okay, but everybody finds a way to cope with it. M most people do that. You're going to have to find a way. 
You're going to have to find a way because not everybody in the world is going to want to have to coddle to you because you're not willing to coddle to anybody else. This is a police officer who is dealing with somebody who has mental health issues right now. Maybe he's scared for his life. Maybe he's dealing and he's been trained, I'm sure, but he still may be scared for his life because you're just saying you're mentally unstable pretty much. You just pretty much said that. You're mentally unstable. You've been drinking and driving. I don't know what you're going to do. What about me? Do you care about the cop? Do you care about what he's going through? Nope, just you because you happen to be non-binary. Trash. Trash, man. And I'm not talking about non-binary people. I'm talking about this specific person. All right, let's go to... Uh, whoop, whoop, let's go to three. Let's do the last part here. Open your mouth. Um, please. I'm trying my hardest. like this ma'am can you not call me ma'am please i'm trying my hardest okay well, okay it means a lot to me i'm trying my hardest i don't feel like a man so okay it's kind of triggering right foot in front of your left nope go back i'm gonna place you in a position i'm sorry but the whole man thing just like i apologize let's see if we can move okay. forward from it arms by your side heel to toe touching just like i am hold on I need you to get to this position, just like I am. Do you have any questions? No, I'm just really anxious. Okay, you have zero questions? No, but I just want to tell you that I suffer from really bad anxiety, especially uh, with generational trauma and PTSD around white people and cops. Like, it's just... Let me stop it right there real quick. If you said that to me, because we're going to look real stupid if you say you struggle with, you see what a mental problem she's talking about? Anxiety. Which vast majority of people have anxiety, just everybody deals with it differently. <clears throat> Generational trauma, and she has PSTD around cops and white people. What is it, What would you say if this cop is like, you know what? <laughs> you know what? If you feel like you can't deal with it, we're just going to go ahead and take you to, we're just going to go ahead and take you to jail. <laughs> It's like, you're being so uncooperative and you smell like alcohol. I'm going to put this breathalyzer on you. We about to dip. We just going to have to put you in a cell. I don't even know if you're mentally stable enough to drive the way you're talking. You have such bad anxiety, you can't stand here and walk straight. And you've been drinking. Can you be on the streets right now? You were driving down the wrong side of the road, ma'am. I know, that's triggering. You've been driving down the wrong side of the road. You're triggered by the word ma'am. You have anxiety. You have PST. PTSD and you feel like you have generational trauma and you're driving a vehicle drunk down the wrong side of the highway? Are you crazy? Man, we're going to take them. Hey, uh, go ahead and send uh, back up because we're going to have to go ahead and uh, put this one out because uh, I don't know. There's a lot going on here and I don't know if I trust this person to get behind the wheel, let alone walk the streets at all. Sorry. Hang on, ma'am. I'm asking if you have any questions before I instruct you to start. This next test, I'm going to ask you to lift a leg of your choice off the ground. Do you have any questions? 1,001, 1,002. Hold on. Go back to the starting eight, position. Four. Go back to the starting five, position. Six. You didn't listen to what I said, did you? You didn't listen to what I said, ma'am. I know. I said when I instruct... I'm to you. I said when I instruct you I to know, start... I know, and right now I just feel f***ing harassed, so... Okay. I said when I instruct you okay. to start... can you just count now? You're going to continue to count until I tell you to stop. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead and be good. Go ahead and place your hands behind your back. Don't, dude. Don't make don't, it hard. Please. Don't make it hard. No, don't. you're... You're going to get a resistance. Dude, I... <laughs> you're going to get a resistance. I don't. Don't resist. Don't. Listen to me. Don't resist. Don't. You're being Come a here. white man and... Come don't. You're the cop. I followed all of your... I don't do it and be a white. Don't resist. No, you have followed all of your... Don't resist. As an indigenous person like you guys. Mentally unsafe. So you're going to be placed under arrest like for it. driving under the influence tonight, ma'am. Have a seat. No. Have a seat. I mean, I will, but like... Does that sound like somebody who's mentally stable? Somebody who suffers from generational trauma, PTSD, and depression, and suicidal tendencies. I took your whoa. phone out of your pocket. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it, you're... Okay, well, where the f*** was that other mother f***? 
motherfucker. White ass motherfucker. Filling me up. I would like my wallet, please. Okay. It's like this, ma'am. Did you see in depression and suicidal tendencies? I took your phone out of your pocket. Your okay, well, where the fuck was that other motherfucker? White ass motherfucker. Filling me up. I would like my wallet, please. Okay. It's like this. I'm not sure what she said at the end. It's not like she said nothing about Molly, ma'am, or something else. But, um, but my main, my, I don't really care about any of that kind of stuff. My main objective really is what y'all heard at the very end. <laughs> Can I just see you guys are being fucking assholes about somebody who suffers from generational trauma, PTSD, and depression, and suicidal tendencies? <clears throat> Does that sound like somebody who's normal? You see, that's the kind of stuff, and I'm, I'm, I try to be very sensitive to this stuff because I understand people really struggle with these things but it's every time I hear this coming from people who are non-binary or transgender and they want us to be okay and follow them like if she was talking right now in front of a crowd and put something on TikTok and people were like yes the 0.7% of people were like yes sounds good if 0.7% of people were like that okay and we were clapping for this girl because she got up there and said hey guys I struggle with suicide and I struggle with depression and I struggle with PSTD and I struggle with trauma and I struggle about being white people and I struggle with life is that somebody we're supposed to get behind and be like yes so if somebody says they're not binary and transgender let's believe them even though they told us they have multiple years of mental illness just like we just did that video on uh, Layla, Layla Jane who said she struggled with mental illness growing up, and then her mother immediately said, yes, what you need to do is become a boy in transition. Just when do we follow people who have mental illnesses? And then, see, people, and this is, where, this is where I think they're starting, and this is working out exactly like it should, and this is what I mean. People want to have mental illness so much. It's like a cool thing to have mental illness now, but the problem is what's happening now is People are taking that mental illness and then pushing it together with transgender saying it, that if I don't transition or if you don't call me by my pronouns, I'm going to take my life. What they what they're actually doing is not is proving our point. It's not proving the point that you need to be transgender. The point is you're starting to prove more and more and more. But we're starting to see more and more is that y'all struggle with the mental illness. So we are less likely to listen to you now. That's more of a reason not to give into your delusion, because mentally you're unstable the more i hear transgender people talk we just talked about a man who was transgender who had child you know what in his room he had another guy right we had the uh the officer who was selling secrets he had the other person who's still in luggage it's the same thing over and over you had and this guy who was transgender cross-dressing assaulted a woman and also had child stuff in his room but, and he, he mentioned, if you go watch, there's an interview that he did a while back, a long time ago, talking about mental Ill health issues, but yet we're supposed to be like, yes, you should be transgender. That is not what's causing the mental illness. Do you understand that? The mental illness is what's causing them to want to be transgender, not the other way around. It's not that they, if they don't, they believe they want to be a, a woman. So now their mental health is starting to break down. It's their mental health breaking down that makes them want to transition. We're trying to get it backwards. Like if somebody says, I want to be a girl. We think if we tell them, no, that's what causes their mental illness. No, the mental illness is what causes them to want to say, I want to be a girl. Because it takes something for somebody to completely be like, I want to remove body parts. Or I want to hop into a dress. Or like this person who wants to say that they have a problem with white people. They have social anxiety. They have the person. They, they deal with suicidal attitudes. They, they deal with suicidal uh, Tennessee and not only that this woman was drinking driving on the wrong side of the road is that a normal person to you guys does that sound like somebody who's stable no so the more stories I keep hearing about this and I keep hearing about this mental illness being the background the more I start to believe that we can't put we cannot let these people take over we can't validate them because I believe it hurts them more than it helps them because we heard it, people who go in transgender, I mean transition, they even they get even more depressed. They want to take their life even more, because what they think will make them feel better won't. It won't. If you don't deal with your mental illness, you don't deal with your health issues. It's gonna destroy you. And the worst thing in this life, and you can, if you guys are alive and watching this, obviously, you can attest to this. There is one thing to be dead. It is one thing to be dead. It is completely a different thing to wish you were dead. 
y'all know what that feeling's like every day. Imagine every day for the next 15 years, you you, you either feel like you're going to die because your anxiety is so bad, you feel like you're dying, or you want to die for the next 15 years. That is so mentally taxing on somebody. That's why people want to take their lives because they get tired of feeling like they're dying or feeling like they want to die. It drains you. It makes you so depressed that it's hard to keep going because you feel like either you're hated by God, you hate yourself, or people hate you. One of the three, most likely. One of those three. Either you feel hated by God, so you want to die, or you feel like God's making you die. You feel like people hate you, and they want you dead. And then you have yourself. You feel like you hate yourself, so you want yourself dead. So you have God who wants you dead, you have people who want you dead, and you have yourself who wants you dead. And then you go through that every single day trying to fight the thoughts, and you can't find a way out. What we cannot do for people like that is start to validate them in whatever they want to do. Because when you're in that mindset, when you're in that mindset, you're going to want to do crazy things. When I was going through that stuff, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to get more into porn. I wanted to have more girlfriends. I wanted to um, do, have more sex. <clears throat> I wanted to drink more. I wanted to smoke more weed. I wanted to do drugs. I wanted to do Molly. I wanted to do LSD. I wanted to do acid. I did mushrooms. I wanted to do everything. Anything and everything, because you are trying to find a way out from these thoughts. And the bad thing is when we start to validate people who are going through these things, you get people like this who are just completely mentally breaking down. And even if she's joking, even if she's just trying to get out of this ticket, that's still not a normal way to react. Do you understand that? That's not a normal way. Even if you're joking. I'm going to say this last thing. I'll shut up. People who do these pranks that we just talked about. You know how you have somebody who walks into somebody's house. We had that one guy who's walking into people's houses. Or we had that other guy we just watched the other day who said he was going to crack somebody's head with a rock because of something stupid. It was just a prank, though. People who do that kind of stuff are not mentally well. Because if that's your normal reaction to stuff, it's to say, hey, I'm going to crack your head open with the skull. Just I'm going to crack your head open with this, this stone. <laughs> I'm just kidding, bro. And the guy who said he was going to have sex with the cat, those are not normal people. And we got to start pointing this stuff out. Our kids are breaking down mentally because of social media. And me and you are contributing to that by not speaking up. Let's help the young generation. And let's see if we can rebuild this world to what it should be. Not the world, but this country. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments section. Peace.